Welcome to the GCN Zwift group workout, race winning hit interval session. I'm gonna be completing this on an elite Drivo smart trainer. It's about an hour long, starts off with a 10 minute warm up, and in a few moments time, I'll talk you through exactly what is gonna lie ahead. And all this is gonna be taking place in Richmond, Virginia, in a virtual world of course, on the World Road Championship circuit back where Lizzie Dignan won her title and of course back where Peter Sagan won their title. So the first part of the, uh, of the workout is basically to gradually warm up over a 10 minute period. If you're obviously on Zwift, you've got all your power zones there. So I need to be riding at around 150 <clears throat> RPM. Now the wonderful thing about the group workout is that regardless of the energy or the power that you're putting out, you will stay within the group. So somebody could be producing a hefty 1,000 watts, somebody else a more modest 300 watts, for example. But as long as you don't stop pedaling and drop out the group, we will all stay together. Look at this, a nice peloton of GCN jerseys. So what is a high intensity interval session? Basically, it's the sort of session it's broken up into composite parts, a blend of real high threshold work intervals and also low intensity as well. And the great thing about these sessions, especially when they're nudging north of 40 minutes to an hour, is they can be quite monotonous. Not so much on Zwift, of course, but those little efforts really break up the hour, allowing you to focus and it's far more interesting a session and from a physiological point of view, you're gonna get a lot more out of it as well. So I just need to knock it down a little bit. You can tell how keen I am. There we go. And this warm up for 10 minutes, it says graduated. And if you're just watching this on YouTube, you're not riding to power. Well, the warm up is kind of perceived effort level of between two and five, gradually building up. And then when we hit 10 minutes, <coughs> We're gonna do some high cadence bursts just to get ourselves ready for what lies ahead. So we're gonna do one minute at 110 RPM, really spinning the legs, but not too hard in terms of effort. So I, I guess around an effort level of sort of six or seven, spinning the legs, then knock it back again for a minute, then knock it back up, some high cadence drills. We'll do that for six minutes, and that is when the session itself will commence. And by that point, all being well, you should be warmed up. Well, I've got a fan here. If you're at home, make sure you've got a place that's well ventilated. Make sure you've got a towel on board because believe you me, you're gonna be doing some serious sweating and plenty of hydration as well because this session's an hour long. If you've got two big bottle cages on your bike, it's worth putting two bead-ons on or at least having another one with an easy reach. So hydration, absolutely crucial, and ventilation as well. So, still got around seven minutes to warm up, Just gradually increase it. Now let's talk about the hit element of this session. So first up, following the high cadence drills, as you can see on the left hand side here, we're gonna do 30 seconds pretty much flat out and for me that's going to be nudging 400 watts my FTP is around 300 watts then I'm going to drop back down for three minutes and hold it at or around or just above your functional threshold power and for you, those of you not using power that's going to be a perceived effort level of around eight and then after three minutes you're going to have a 10 second sprint before a very welcome four minute rest riding at half that power to perceived effort of around five and that will enable you to recover for the next round and there are five blocks of what I've just described so just to repeat 30 seconds flat out three minutes at around FTP or just over 10 minute sprint then four minutes recovery and at the end a nice 10 minute cool down so and all on this classic Richmond, Virginia world circuit. 
Now the circuit, when it first came out, got a fair bit of stick, but it provided us with some of the most dramatic and exciting racing, very much like the classics, like the Tour of Flanders. And the atmosphere of the world was absolutely electric. And the course completely rendered in this virtual world. Even on the pavé sections as well we've got here. So, I'm just gradually increasing my effort. So I'm conscious now of my breathing a little bit more. And because this session is so hard, you know, a right warm up is absolutely crucial. So, the cadence burst is what we're gonna do next. A little while yet. As you see, everything is laid out clearly for you. All my metrics are on the screen. So I've got my speed, distance traveled, elevation, time. I've got my heart rate, got my cadence, and I've got my power there as well. We've got the countdown just on the right hand side, how much is left at the warm up. And again, I just need to nudge it back a little bit. I think it's those two cups of coffee that I had. Let's just knock it back. Just hope I've set my FTP right. Otherwise it could be a bit painful. So. A group workout, the concept is fantastic. Doing the same session with a like-minded group of people. But regardless of ability, this is for everybody. Nothing wrong with doing a workout by yourself. You can do workout mode. You can select from numerous options on Zwift. Tailored workouts and tailored long-term training plans as well. And the one we're using today is uh, one of Dan Lloyd's because we've got 32 GCN sessions. Four from Tom, four from me, four from Simon, four from Dan. And we're using the race winning efforts. So these really are the sorts of efforts. Okay, we'll help replicate riding a race. But as I said, this is a session that is for everybody. You don't need to race. Whatever your objective, in cycling, whether it's just wanting to ride 50 miles for the first time, maybe drop a little bit of weight, or aiming to ride a sporty, this sort of session will definitely set you up on the right foot. Brutally hard, don't get me wrong. The great thing about the workout element, the group workout, is that you can do it with a group of people, and nobody's gonna be off the front, and nobody's gonna be off the back. But a word of advice, don't stop pedaling. If you stop pedaling, you will risk losing your place in the group. And if you drop below six meters behind, you're gonna to have to chase to get back on. I don't really want to be doing that. So look at us all there. 120 people, that's great. So two minutes and 25 left of the warm up. So there we go. There's my kind of zone that I'm aiming for, just on the left hand side in the gray. That's 200 watts. It's a lovely graduated warm up. You can really focus on what is ahead. And the wonderful thing about the palette that we've got here, you can see everybody around you that you're riding with. You can see whereabouts on the course you're on the right hand side. Zwift have updated that in recent months, so it's far clearer. You can just see we're just heading towards that famous dog's leg on the Richmond circuit. We'll be doubling back on ourselves. This was used for the TT as well. Elements of the course, of course, used for the time trial as well as the road race. All your metrics nice and centre, very clear. And then your kind of power curve along the bottom of the screen as well. And then what is coming up on the left hand side. Everything is clear, allowing you to focus as best you can on the job at hand. So. So we're coming up very soon, just over a minute for our first high cadence drill. So again, not going too deep. Just gonna nudge it onto the big one in readiness. For the first of the drills. Which is coming up in just under a minute. So spin your legs, effort level of about six or seven. Don't need to go too deep. So for me, that's 225 watts. So effort level six or seven for the rest of you. Just spin those legs. You shouldn't really be feeling a burn you should start to feel the bite of effort. Because we are, the first effort is a 30 second, pretty much flat out sprint. 
way above your FTP. And this sort of session, very good for improving your FTP, your endurance. Also, explosivity as well. So we have those 10 second bursts as well. So this session really has something for everybody. So 11 seconds to our first high cadence drill. Okay. Here we go. To get it up. Let's hold it there, 110. There we go. Then we've got a minute rest after this to spin. So not too much power. Just spin those legs. And this sort of session really instills a bit of discipline as well in controlled riding. It's structured like this for a reason. So stick to it as best you can. And that's why these plans are so good. There is something for everybody. Whether you want to improve your explosive power, your ability to make efforts on climbs, time trialing, improving your FTP, sprinting. I kind of lost count of how many sessions there are. But the cool thing about workout mode on Zwift is you can actually design your own as well, drag it across from another training plan, like Training Peaks, for example. You can bring it across and drop it in. Bang, that's the first one done. Drop it in or use the very easy drag and drop palette built into Zwift to create your own bespoke training plan. Or of course, select a group workout and jump in. And in relation to joining a group workout, obviously it's pretty easy. You can either do it on the Zwift mobile app, just select event and simply join. Now the group workouts are for everybody. So they'll have a little brown E uh, signifying. So obviously other open events are generally based on category. But workouts are for everybody. Just click join and basically be held in a pen very much like any normal event on Zwift. This is not my power down. It's a thing of talking and riding. So very easy to enter. And as I said, riding along with a group of like-minded people, doing the same session, but with, you know, no fear of actually getting dropped. So. More power. Oh, blimey, I've been telling to put a bit more power. Here we go. I think I've talked over, we should be spinning now, so apologies for that. I'm gonna stop waffling and focus on the session. <laughs> so 30 seconds more to the next spin. Spin those legs. Think about the way you're riding your bike as well. The beautiful thing about riding indoors is it gives you an opportunity to think, because there's no other outside impact factors like traffic, weather, road surface. You can focus on the way you're pedaling. Think about your form on the bike. So we're coming up to the end of that one. There we go, as denoted by the luminous arch. Just drop it down. There you go, remember to keep drinking. It's a definite. Yeah, ventilation and drinking when doing indoor sessions, absolutely crucial. If you don't drink, or if you don't drink and you get too hot, it can materially affect, or adversely affect, the benefits you're gonna get from the training because you just, your body won't allow yourself or itself to push itself to the limit. So you need to make sure your core body temperature isn't too high. Although yes, generally riding indoors, you're gonna get warmer. So that's why you just need to make sure you're hydrating properly. Okay, 110 RPM now guys. Then we've got one minute rest. Just 
20 seconds left of this last high cadence drill. Watch your power. Don't want to go too deep just yet. Then we've got a minute rest, and then it's into the first 30 second effort. Okay. So, just reduce the power again, back to 150 watts or so. Effort level of five or six. 40 seconds or so to the next effort, or the first of five sets of high intensity drills. And improving your FTP, improving your neuromuscular level as well. And we're all gonna do it together. So, just reduce that. So make sure you're in position and ready. You've had a sip of your drink, because it's three minutes and 40 seconds of pain, but it'll be worth it. So, you can see that little sunrise ahead. Okay, here we go. 30 seconds flat out. Well, just. Okay. Coming to the end. Okay, knock it down to just around FTP now for three minutes. Be hard. Okay. So you should have bedded yourself into this rhythm now. I'm riding it at or around my functional threshold power. For those of you without a power meter, it's around an effort level of eight, okay? So, think about your form on the bike. Don't grip the bars too tight. Keep your firm, but relaxed grip. Think about applying the power as evenly as you can. I can just knock it back a little bit. Okay, so over a minute of this first three minute section, and then we're gonna kick it up. Another 25%. I'm going to be hovering at about 400 watts, effort level of 9 or 10 for the rest of you. This is great. All of us working together. Stay focused, look at your metrics. Think about this as an investment. Think about a nice cup of tea or a cup of coffee afterwards. Think about the good it's going to do you. Coming towards the end. Remember guys, big kick, 110 RPM. Here it comes. Okay, two, go.
10 seconds, done. Okay, now to rest. Back down 150 watts for me. There's a level of five. That's one of five sets of intervals out of the way, so well done. Okay, well done guys. Great work. Four more to go. And knock it right back. It's important that you do this interval session, as I say, a high intensity interval session is about variation, breaking the ride up. And these, these rests are here for a reason. So you can recover, because what you're doing in a hit session, especially after riding at 30 seconds and dropping back down, you're putting yourself into oxygen debt. It stresses your cardiovascular system. And over time, you do more more sessions like this, you'll basically get fitter. And the definition of fitness, amongst other things, is the ability to repeat hard efforts. And most people, regardless of their fitness, could put out a reasonable amount of power on a bike. But fitness comes in when you're told to do it again, and again, and again. And that's why there's a lot of repetition in here. There you go, I'm mean, trying to knock it down. It's quite a fun, I'm used to riding hard nearly everywhere, so it's actually quite a good discipline to actually knock it off a little bit. Here we go, it's quite nice. Enjoy this bit, spin your legs. RPM of around 90. Take your breath back, focus on the next element to come. Keep an eye on your heart rate. Pretty happy with mine at the moment. Get that heart rate nice and low again. And that's why it's important to have a, a well ventilated area because if you're in an area where the heat builds up too much, you'll get what's called heart rate float. It can go up as much as 10 or 15 beats for the same power. And obviously there's only so much your body can sustain for that. So you'll get a quite a considerable distortion when you're trying to make the big efforts. So, Again, just to repeat, those of you riding without power, effort level about five. Enjoy this part, because you've got a lot of hard work still to come. But they do come around very quickly. I'm just gonna use this little opportunity just to get myself out the saddle a bit. Stretch my glutes, you can do this, it's not fine. As long as you keep the power down, lower the cadence for a few seconds, absolutely fine. Bit of a stretch. And then we're up to the next 30 second interval, which is coming up very shortly, like in five seconds time. So focus now, get yourself ready. Here it comes, just on the screen there. Let's go, come on. Nearly there. Well done. Okay, now keep it constant. This is the hard bit now, that's where it really bites. Hold it out or around your FTP. You're doing great, guys. Stay focused. Doing great.
focus on an even delivery of power. Keep an eye on your numbers. It's a real learning curve for me as well. I'm trying to keep that constant. But please forgive me if I don't talk quite as much during this bit. Aim for about 90 RPM here. Fantastic work. And midway through, the second of five, ticking them off as we go. This is what the other psychological aspect to this sort of training. Just an hour and on indoor trainer. Pretty brutal proposition. Jump on Zwift, break it up with different sessions, with different elements of the session, shall I say. The hour will go by very quickly and you get far more bang for your buck from a training perspective as well. So I can just see everybody riding by with their little individual dashboards, which is really cool. I think I'm getting this dial now, he says. Spiking the power a bit. Keep drinking. Focus on the next sprint. Okay. 10 seconds now to the next sprint. There's your marker on Zwift. I'm gonna call it the sacred sunset. Here we go. Here we go. Well done. Back down for another rest. Knock it off quickly. Gear down. These cadence bursts are really good. It's to enable you to adapt to the different environments out on the road. To make your body far more versatile. Now as I say, it might be that your ambition is solely Kind of lose a bit of weight, get a little bit fitter, maybe ride a long group ride with your mates. Whatever it is, a session like this will just make you fitter, make you a far better bike rider. And if your sole aim is to ride at one pace on a run, that's fine. But doing this in the week, incorporating these sessions into your regimen will make that riding easier so you can ride far more comfortably and enjoy the ride rather than suffering because you're pushing your boundaries all the time using different cadences, riding at different efforts. Makes your body far more rigorous, versatile and resilient to whatever the road, the elements or other riders might throw at you. So although it's called race winning efforts, which is what they replicate, this is a session that everybody can benefit from regardless of their ability. And that's why these group sessions are so good. Because quite clearly there's people putting out a very wide range of different powers, different experience levels, different ability, different objectives, but everybody's gonna get something out of it. And it's a great way to do it. And of course it can be done in a, on different environments, over on Watopia, over on the new Mayan course as well, that's just been dropped. That's great. It's a bit like cycling meets Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, I like that one. Of course the mountain course, go through the volcano, and of course there's a Ride London course as well going up Box Hill into Surrey, but here we are today in Richmond, Virginia. 
Now, for any of you watching and thinking, well, the Richmond, Virginia course had some climbs on it. Well, because this is a session where we need to keep on top of it, it's about race efforts on the flat, improving your cadence, we're avoiding the climbs. So this is the Richmond course flat version. There's various versions or deviations on each course. Concentrate on climbs, concentrate on shorter loops. And this is the flat Richmond circuit. Of course, the full Richmond circuit, we take in all of those climbs. So let's just drop the power a bit. So once you're warmed up, it's easy to nudge too much power out. So these sessions riding at a set level really impose that discipline. That's what you've got, you've got to come used to as a rider. It's a really good sit, uh, skill set to have. Again, regardless of your fitness, having discipline as a rider will help you pace, when you're pacemaking on a long ride or on a long climb. And the ability to understand your body, regardless of what you're doing, is just as important as being fit. You know your boundaries, you know how to spend your effort. So it's time to get ready now for the next one. All that talking has brought us through the end of another rest period. So remember, 30 seconds, high cadence, 110 RPM. Get focused. I need to reduce my power a little bit. See, I'm just too keen. So we go, the golden sunset, the entry into the portal of pain. Here we go, lift it. Spin those legs as well. Keep it going. Oh. And now hold it, okay? You've made that effort. Now get it back up. Effort level of eight. Just around your FTP. And hold it. Sometimes quite a challenge to match the required cadence with the power, but don't worry. It's taking me a few moments. So 100 RPM, 110. I think I've got it. Obviously you need to match up power to cadence. Quite often only one gear works. Once you've found it, just sit there. Here's me, look at my numbers. Just bear with me. Keep it going. Stay focused guys, come on, one minute, then that last 10 second kick. Keep it going. Keep it locked in, yeah? Think about pedaling as smoothly as you can. Coming into the last bit. We've got a bit of a kick now, 10 seconds. 
Okay. There's the orange portal of pain. The OPOP. Here we go. Bring it up. 10 seconds, come on. Done. Well done, guys. Keep pedaling. Don't stop pedaling. I'm just going to out the saddle a bit. Get the power down. Stretch my glutes. Well done. Two down. Doing great. Okay guys, well done. Make sure you knock that power down to at or near what it's asking you to do. So those at home without a power meter, effort level of around five or six. And those of you riding for FTP, 50% of your FTP roughly. Somebody's just asked me on Zwift, if I'm really riding or sat on the sofa, I'm riding. I promise you I'm riding. So, nearly halfway through. These are the bits, this is this phenomenon, this indoor training phenomenon that I've encountered for many years, is that the sessions within an interval session, or the elements where you're riding easy, time kind of speeds up, and then the bits that are brutally hard, time slows down. What's that all about? There you go. Anyway, spin those legs, stay focused. Still 40, about 20 odd minutes to go. Two more blocks, sorry, to go now. So just keep spinning those legs. And one thing that I would advocate as well, getting the most out of training on indoor, on Zwift, or just on the turbo, you spend a lot of time in one position. It's an opportunity to focus on your position on the bike and the way you put power through the pedal. So only about for the last four or five years, I've started to do some core work and we've got some videos on GCN, type in core work, cyclists, and you find some sessions there. They won't actually enable you to produce more power, you'll just have a, more, a far more stable platform for getting the power out on your bike. Pretty much all pros do it now, off season and through the season. I've been to numerous training camps and seen the pros really working on their core. And it's not about putting on bulk, it's about securing this centre down in your abdomen so you can lock in and really get the power down. And though I'm not racing anymore, I've found my position on the bike's far more stable, and I also hardly get any back problems at all. Not that I suffered a lot from back problems, but I don't get that nagging fatigue in my back. So just a little tip there. If you did them already, great. If you don't, it's worth a try. So here we go. Breaks over. You can see the sunset portal, whatever you want to call it up ahead. And that can mean only one thing. Another 30 seconds, riding an effort level of 9 or 10, keeping that cadence high. We're nearly there, 3, 2, 1, here we go. Keep it going. Done. Nice one, guys. Now hold it. But out or around your FTP effort level of eight. It's 
three minutes. Hold on guys, get yourself locked in, find a position that's comfortable, well I say comfortable, you know what I mean. These are going to start to hurt more, the next one's going to hurt even more, especially coming off the back of that 30 seconds. So I'm going to have to stop talking, forgive me. Try and sleep as still as you can. Reduce the rocking in your shoulders. Stay focused. Smooth application of power. Halfway through. Then we got a little 10 second kicker. Great that we're all together here. We're all doing the same workout but as a team. I love it. Great concept. So keep your breathing controlled. Here we go, nearly there, nearly got that 10 seconder, and then we got that lovely four minute break. Okay guys, nearly there for the last 10 seconds. Here it comes, three, two, one, go. Hold on. Get the power on, but off, you know what I mean? The quicker you settle, the quicker you'll recover. And as I said before, it is quite a skill. You'll naturally want to knock it off, but actually totally. And of course out on the road, you're not going to stop. So it's important that you keep, keep, keep pedaling, just knock the power off. Well done. One more block to go, you're doing great. So that here, one more block to go. Just say you all deserve a power up. You guys deserve a power up as well. I'm just talking to those whispers. 120 people that join me on this one. This is great. In Richmond, Virginia. It's going over the cobblestones. Exclamation mark. Nice one, cheers bud. So, just keep that discipline. Yeah. Keep drinking. So many cool metrics for you to look at on Zwift. You can of course drill deep down into each session that you've done. Whether it's a workout, group workout, whether it's an event, or whether you've just gone for a couple of laps of Watopia, drill down into each session, look at where you're applying the power. So many metrics that have been improved on in terms of your ability to analyze them on Zwift now. So much information. 
so you, you can look back, reflect, and look at where you need to improve. Or just reassure yourself you're doing the right thing. And they're all saved. You can save every ride if you wish. Look at them on your app as well, on the Zwift app. And it's interesting to see all the metrics down the right hand side. So you've got my power to weight ratio, on my, sorry, my watt, per, watt per kilo, which is power to weight. At the moment, I'm riding at 2.4 watt per kilogram. Got my distance there. And one thing I do need to apologize for, I can't remember if I, I did it or it was a sneaky ploy by my good friend Simon Richardson. Look at the length of my socks. That's incredible. I don't know whether I'm going to be losing or gaining aerodynamic advantage there or not, to be honest with you, but just a little bit too high for me. But there we go. Anyway, a minute to go in this recovery session. Only one more block, so two more sprints. Got that 30 second interval. We've got the three minutes at around FTP, effort level of eight. Then that last. 10 minute sprint and then a lovely 10 minute cool down, gradually reducing in intensity to get rid of all those toxins. So it's been great so far, it's been lovely to ride along with you. Just gonna stretch my legs just before the last one. No problem doing this, just keep an eye on your power levels. I'm gonna hold it there. It's easy on a big gear just to put a bit too much power through. So, so coming up is the final 30 second interval. So, there it is. There's our lovely sunset. I need to knock it down a bit before I kick it up again. Here we go. 110 RPM. Well done, now back up, back down to your, that's around FTP now, hold it. This is where it bites after that effort. This is where you're putting that load on your muscles and on your cardiovascular system. Set as quickly as you can back down to this, this level and hold it. Focus. Well done guys, doing great. This is hurting more than I thought. Stay focused guys, come on. Last one. Try not to get too ragged. That's it, hold it there. Focus on smooth pedal strokes. Get back into control. Stay on top of the gear. I'm pedaling around 90 here. So one minute 15 left. In that last 10 seconds, to nearly empty the tank. This is great work. Okay, last minute of this now. Keep it going. Thirty seconds now. 
come on. Keep that discipline. Think of those gains, yeah? Give a nice bit of cake afterwards. Wonder how many pizza slices we've burned. Swift, we'll tell you that. Okay, the sunset of doom. 10 seconds now. Here we go. Done. Woo! Nice one, guys. I've got a live studio audience of three here. Well done. That's a big ride on from me. Did you say that? That's a big ride on from me. So, it's a graduated warm down. Just as important. So you let your breathing get back to normal. Let that heart rate become more suppressed. Keep your legs spinning. Try and keep it above 90 if you can. But over this 10 minutes, we just gradually reduce that effort. And boy, considering we've been riding for 57 minutes nearly, that's pretty incredible. That's the beautiful thing about these hit sessions, or any structured session that you're gonna find on Zwift or anywhere else for that matter, breaks up the time and doing it in this sort of way as well, with a group of like-minded people, all with differing objectives, but ultimately willing to hurt themselves for some sort of gain is fantastic. So if you've not tried it, it's worth giving it a nudge. Again, that felt like it was 15 or 20 minutes, not an hour. I can honestly say that. I've trained on the turbo for many, many years, incorporated it into my training regime when I was a pro. And it's there, it was, I never used to like it because it was so hard it really did reap dividends. I say, as long as you've got a plan in place, a structure to your training, you mix it up, you can really benefit. And one thing I've not touched on that's just as important is making sure that you rest up as well. What you don't want to be doing is too many of these sessions in a week because they're quite hard to recover from. Obviously, depending on the level of fitness. And that's why with Interwift, we've got not just individual training sessions, but structured, structured training programs pulled together by coaches with the aim of improving you in all different aspects of this most multifaceted of sports that we kind of love so much. So there really is something there for everybody. So I'm just going to lock it onto the small ring actually. Oh that's nice. Oh yeah. Oh that's nice. Lift it a bit. Oh. So as I say, Keep drinking. And one of the things, as part of your plan, I mean, you're gonna get the most out of your riding, especially your indoor riding, if you have a plan, a structured kind of week, including plenty of rest. Make sure you've got your ventilation strategy on point, also your hydration, but also after your ride. So, well, before you ride first, make sure you're fully hydrated. During your ride, keep your, your fluid levels tops up and have something on standby for when you finish as well. And after a session as long as this, you're gonna need a bit of food. I have to make a smoothie. A nice fruit smoothie which I can next straight away. It's something that many of you will have heard of, a few of you might not have heard of, that golden window. It's that golden hour where the body can absorb or re let's top up its glycogen stores um, at its most efficiently. It's most efficient, sorry, if I can get my words out. So yeah. As soon as you can, when you finish your warm down, get some fluids, get some food down, some pre-prepared food, make sure it's good food as well. And then you can sit on the sofa, stick on GCN, and have a nice piece of cake. You don't have to watch GCN. You can. Oh, so nice, I'm just gonna knock it down a bit now. It's 120 watts. And five minutes of the cool down still to go. And that was a really enjoyable session. That's the cool thing, yeah. You can interact with people, have a chat with your mates, and say, hey, I'm doing this workout, I've all got this sportif coming up, 
How about over the next few weeks, we set up a few group workouts. You can set them up, you can join other ones, and you can train together. You can have somebody in the UK, somebody in the States, one of your mates in Australia. You can ride at the same time. And that's a beautiful thing. I'm riding here with people from all over the world. Just look at the spread of, of flags on the screen on the right-hand side. I've got somebody from El Faga from Brazil, O Nanane from Japan, I've got R Krieg from, uh, from Switzerland, I've got somebody from, from Korea, I've got three Canadians, a uh, couple of Americans. There we go. It is pretty amazing. It's an amazing community that we have. GCN and on Zwift, of course. It's fantastic that you can ride in this uh, incredibly realistic virtual world with friends from all, from all over the world and also you can meet new people as well. I've met a lot of people on Zwift. I've ridden on Zwift and then met them out in person in the real world. So I'm just gradually warming down now. And again, a couple of sessions within a structured plan, you'll really start to see some gains here. There's explosive efforts as well, at a real deep neuromuscular level will help you deliver power more efficiently. And doing these over and under sort of sessions, so 30 seconds hard, drop it back down to FTP. That will basically help improve your FTP, help improve your endurance. And putting you slightly into oxygen debt. And that's why the first 30 seconds to a minute of each of those fits riding at FTP was so hard as your body fights to catch up. There essentially is a deficit and the more sorts of training you do like this, the shorter, it will the shorter time it will take your body to recover from those repeated efforts. And that's essentially the essence of getting fit. So, nearly at the end now, like three minutes or so. Listen, I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna afford myself a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, move the camera there. Sorry about that, guys. Certainly glad I've got a fat on. Knocking it down now to 100 watts for me. So that's a third of my FTP now, so back down to like an effort level of three for those of you who aren't working with a power meter. Loads of really cool comments coming on Zwift as well. And that's the great thing, you can uh, have your keyboard close to hand, type on that. Probably the best thing is to get a little uh, head unit holder, stick your phone on. We obviously have Zwift works on both Android and iOS now. Get the Zwift app up and everything is there. So a complete dashboard shows where you are, all your metrics are there too. You can DM, you can direct message your mates, you can drop in on a ride. So definitely use the Zwift app if you can. Gives you far more interactivity. A little bit easier than dripping sweat into your keyboard as well. So just spinning out the last few moments. So a lovely graduated warm down just as important as a warm-up. Get rid of all those toxins, get your heart rate back down. So I was up at around 160 now, ticking over at about 100 beats, around 100 watts. For the first time, because that was quite painful, I'm just admiring the architecture here in Richmond. What a lovely place, it's a lovely day as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Just focus on gradually reducing that power. It's under 100 watts now, so effort level of around two. Just keep spinning those legs. Of course, all this, I've been uh, riding on my Elite Drivo Intelligent Turbo Trainer. So it's giving me that really realistic road feel. So just under a minute now. So it should be down to effort level of just two or three. And no doubt now you're planning how to uh, how to recover, depending of course if you've done this session pre-work, after work. But thanks so much for 
for joining me on this session. Lots of other sessions to unlock in Zwift as well, or to try. So easy to access. Hop in and join a ride. Regardless of your ability, there really is something for everybody on here. The last 20 seconds or so, slowing right down. Well, here we go. Hit session, pretty much done and dusted. Thanks very much for joining me. There's all my metrics on the screen. Let's just check out how much pizza I actually burnt. How many pizza slices? 2.8 slices of pizza. Just over an hour of riding. And there's my power distribution, which I can drill into and have a look at again. Now, thanks very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that rather difficult session. But if you haven't already subscribed to the Global Social Cycling Network, you can do so for free by clicking on the globe and that way you can access a lot more training content. Now, for another video about some nifty little Zwift hacks, how about clicking just down here? And for a video where Cy raced on the streets of Richmond on Zwift, how about clicking just down here? And don't forget to like and share as well.